الرحمن الرحيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى اله الطاهرين اما بعد قال الله الحكيم ان لله وانا اليه راجعون before we delve into the unfolding of sham e gharib I just want all of us to reflect a bit upon the message of Sham al Khalifa after the martyrdom, after the sacrifice and the greatest sacrifice of Imam Hussein and the Ashab of Imam Hussein. We've been reflecting upon the Dua Ya Rafah wa Abdullah al Hussein. And we spoke about the theoretical understanding of Tawheed, which was depicted, which was transferred through Imam Hussain alayhi salam to all of us. And on the day of Ashura, a few hours ago, we spoke about the maqtal we spoke about how imam hussein was slain in which he reflected the tawhid amali and tonight is the night of sham e gharib has a message for all of us why it's known as the eve of sham e gharib gharib is a person in urdu we tend to translate gharib as a poor person however in arabic and farsi gharib means a person who is a foreigner in a foreign land is known as gharib that's why when we refer to imam rada we say imam al gharib al gharib al qurba because Mashhad Khurasan was not his town. Medina was his town. And he's known as a Gharib because he's a foreigner there. Tonight is the night of Sham e Gharibaan. One may say that the women and children of Abu Abdullah al Hussein were Gharib in the sense that they were in the foreign land. Yes, true. But at the same time, there's a message. As we said, that there are very deep secrets asrar in the story of imam hussein alayhi salam which requires a lot of reflection to provide the insights of the truth and reality that is hidden behind the message of sham e gharibaan is the message that we all are gharib in this earth we are all foreigners we are all journeying this is not our place our place is hereafter our place is to go back to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by gathering by understanding the message of imam hussein which is the message of tawhid by taking that message that's why we lit candles in sham e gharibaan which is symbolized as the light of hussein in the eve is given to us they try to put off the light as the eye of the quran says but they can never be able to put off the light of guidance in al hussein misba al huda so burning of the candles the sham e gharibaan contains that message the sacrifice of imam hussein alayhi salam was the sacrifice for tawhid so it is required of us to reflect deeper upon the principle of tawhid upon the intricacies upon the complexities upon the beauty of this principle of tawhid many a times we get stuck with the message of imam hussein and the sacrifice of imam hussein being very emotional it is indeed no doubt but that emotionality that sentimentality that crying 
that matam and lamentation is to uphold, is to preserve the message of Tawheed. All of these majalises, Shami Gariban, this red light and the black banners and the alam will not have any meaning and will not be able to understand, we will not be able to understand it unless or until we fully comprehend or to a greater extent comprehend what Tawheed is, especially for our younger generation and future generation. It is very much required that there be an intellectual progress in order to understand what Tawheed is. The message of Abba Abdullah al Hussein was preserved and saved to a greater degree when we uphold the Sha'ir, when we uphold the symbolism by our fathers, by our grandfathers, by our senior members. And it has been brought to us by now. But however, what is required by newer generation, what is required by us is to provide that insight and deeper understanding of this message of Imam Hussain. And through that understanding, we will be able to interpret what we are performing, what we are speaking about, the poetry, the marcia, the lamentation, and the symbolism that it exists. When we speak about, just now recited the, the marcia by Brother Mohsin, may Allah accept, and may Allah accept all the marcias and azadaris and the performances of, and your presence here. It's been supped, it's been recorded. And the reward will be given by Siddiqa Kubra Fatima Tuzara Salamu Laliha. Just now recited in the, in the, in the Salam, where it says, Ab Ayahu Baba. It is the Salam, which is, which echoes every Shami Gharibah where it talks about an unfolding of a truth that took place on the eve of the 11th on the, in the Sham e Gariban. And that is where it says, Abba Ayo ho Baba. Where Zainab speaks to the father and says, Oh father, now you have arrived. Now you have come. This is no fantasy. This is no poetry. This is no reflection of emotionality or sentimentality, but this is the reality. Till Imam Hussein was sacrificed, there was the cries of Siddiqa Kubra. Every evening, Burair says, I hear somebody crying. And Hussein says, this is my mother who have left with me when I left Medina. Awliya, people who have that intellectual capacity, that spirituality, they are capable of entering the realm of Barzakh and listening and seeing and understanding what is happening in Barzakh. And people who were of that level, they are capable to see that. And they saw. As we mentioned in the Masaib as well, Hazrat Sakina was on that level of spirituality that it was her who could hear the recitation of the Quran from the head of Imam Hussain Ali Salam. And we mentioned very briefly, very quickly, because recitation of the Quran from the head of Imam Hussain to our youngsters would be a source of a story or some sort of miraculous reality as such perhaps because of the faith that they have or Bibi Fatima Tuzara being with Imam Hussain alayhi salam and hearing the cries of Imam Hussain crying for Imam Hussain every night in Karbala and finally that beautiful poetry of Mir Anis where he said when Shimmer was about to sever the head of Hussain Hussain sees a lady placing her neck before the neck of Hussain and what does Shimmer say? Shimmer says, Ek khanjar se bhai aur bahan ka gada kaatunga. Phir awas kya gunji? 
اے شمر تو نابینا ہے یہ بہن زینب نہیں زہرا ہے اینڈ دس از دا ریالٹی بیکاز وین دی ایولسٹ اینڈ دا ڈاکسٹ آف دا سول ریچ از ٹو اٹس باٹم اللہ شوز دا ریالٹی آف برزخ اینڈ شمر از سینگ دا ریالٹی اینڈ دا ٹروتھ دیٹ زہرا از دیر ہو ایلس از سینگ حسین از سینگ دیٹ ریالٹی ایز ویل So either a soul have to be the highest level of spirituality to delve into the realm of Barzakh or the soul have to be at the lowest level of reality, of, of reality, of existence, of materiality. It has to be that dense to delve into Barzakh so that Allah shows their reality. That's why Yazid also heard the recitation of the Quran from the head of Hussein. Not everybody did. The priest also saw the Anwar, the luminous being descending from the heaven to the head of Hussein. So therefore, what been discussed in poetry, in Masaib, these are truth. And it requires a deeper understanding of that Tawheed, of those principles, which is at play. That is why لا يومك يومك عبا عبد الله There is no day like the day of عبا عبد الله عنه saying What was happening and what happened What unfolded So when عبا عائه بابا is the truth Till the day of Ashura Fatima was there And then after Fatima leaves Ali comes To assist and help Zainab That's why the way she delivered her sermons, the way she carried the message of Imam Hussain a.s. was supported and helped by Amir al-Mu'mineen who was present there all the time with, with her. It's the message of Tawheed. Mother helped the son to preserve that message, to deliver that message, and father helped the daughter to preserve that message, to deliver that message, to take that message to Sham and deliver it. And they have left that legacy behind of that Tawheed and of that message, which we all have to reflect upon. Ashura, the celebrations of Ashura, the commemorations of Ashura is not just a cultural or just a sentimental or emotional performance but rather this commemoration of Ashura is to remind us of that Tawheed which was preserved, which was brought by the Prophet and preserved by Imam Hussain salam, and left behind to us by Imam Hussain salam. so we all have a responsibility to reflect deeper on these principles and to transfer this message to our youth, to our youngsters based on that intellectuality, based on that understanding. Tonight is a night of hosen and sorrow and it requires a reflection on what went down to initiate from where we left this afternoon that Hussein's head was severed and was placed on the spear and was raised and there was celebration clapping and whistling and drum beating in the enemy's side along with what? along with slogans and shouting and giving takbirat. When the head of Hussein was severed, they were saying, Allahu Akbar. That is Tawheed and there is Tawheed of Hussein. Hussein gave his life for that Allahu Akbar itself. So right after that, it's been mentioned that it was the methodology or the way of degrading the people who are defeated or the 
enemies who were defeated by Omar Saad, by Yazidi forces, that they are going to gallop the horses over the bodies. And special horses were brought, which their description been depicted. Imagine that these horses gonna go over the bodies who were already wounded. <laughs> so therefore, when Omar Saad announced that they're gonna gallop horses over the bodies, the family members, because they were Kufans, many of people who were martyred, who's, who came to help for Imam Hussain were from Kufa as well. We always have a negative connotation or negativity towards Kufa. But at the same time, the majority of the people who did support it were also from Kufa as well. So the family members who are there in Kufa, for example, the family member of Hur, they and Muslim ibn Hausaja, Habib ibn Mazahir, they were head of the tribes. So one after the other, they came and they said, you have done enough, Omar Esad. Please do not disrespect the bodies of our loved ones. Oh, yeah. They were leaders of our tribes. Please do not do this and allow us to claim these bodies and preserve these bodies and take these bodies. Then one after the other, they came and they requested Omar Esad. Zainab says the only body that was left in the plain of Karbala <laughs> was the body of my brother Hussein. Then Zainab raised the hands and he says, is there anyone on this earth, below this sky, below this heaven, to claim the body of Hussein? <laughs> there is no one there to claim the body of Hussein. Like as we said, that these bodies were already had wounds on their body. There is a, there is a narration which has been mentioned by Hamid bin Muslim. I would like to use this narration. I counted 1,900 arrows, 12 spears, 5 axes, 3 swords on the body of Imam Hussein salam. So a body is already like this. Okay, this is from Hamid bin Muslim. I will use the riwayat from Imam Qazim salam. Imam Kazim showed to his Ashab his ring and he says, do you see this ring? How big it is? On the body of my Jad, of my Hussein, there wasn't a spot big enough like this which was not wounded. <laughs> this is from Imam Kazim that his body was wounded, was attacked so much. In Ziyarat al Nahiyah we recite, it was a blood bath. Hussein was in full of blood. He was fully wounded. So a body like this, and at the same time, as you all know, that it was the only one body, according to the narrations that come to us. And when we analyze these narrations, we would say that the only Shaheed who was still alive and his head was severed was Hussein. <laughs> Hussein was still alive. <laughs> While he was alive, his head was severed. So there is only one body in the plain of Karbala without head. Because all of the other heads were taken off later on. They counted the heads one after the other. And we spoke about how the Ali Asghar body, how Ali Asghar's head was even taken. So the body without head in the plain of Karbala. Because the head of Hussein was the most valuable. As soon as when Shimur severed the head of Hussein, he gave it to Huli. Huli, take this head quick. Because there was a price on the head of Hussein. <laughs> and the price on the head of Hussein, and, don't, don't, and the only one who knows the value of that head will have a price on it. That's why that Rahib, that's why that priest in Halab comes to them and he says, please take all this money and give me this head for one day. <laughs> because he know the value of this head. He know the value of it. So here the head of Hussein was given and the body was on the ground. 
And Umar Asad says, bring these special horses which were heavy in their hooves to gallop over the body of Hussein. The horses went on the body of Hussein from one side of plain of Karbala to the other. And it says that the ribs of Hussein were crushed under these hooves of the horses in front of the brother. And then after that, as the sun starts to set, it's been mentioned that they started to snatch and get the war, spoils of war. They snatched the armor of Imam Hussein alayhi salam. A person came and he took the armor of Imam Hussein. Another person came and took the helmet of Imam Hussein. <laughs> it reached to a point that there was the torn shirt of Imam Hussein alayhi salam, which was very special. That's why when Imam Zainul Abedin alayhi salam was leaving Sham, was freed in Sham, one of the things that he claimed back was the cradle of Ali Asghar. <laughs> was the rings of Sakina, which was snatched in Sham e Gariban, and it was the kurta, it was the shirt of Hussein. He said, this shirt was specially made by our grandmother Fatima to Zahra. So that means that, as in the Ziyarat and Nahiya, we recite that my salams is to the Shaheed who had nothing on his body, who was Oriyan, left in the plain of Karbala. After they galloped the horses over the body of Imam Hussein alayhi salam, once again they gathered. Once again they gathered. And then in the Qiyam, in the tents of Imam Hussein alayhi salam, Zainab heard horses are coming. Then she asked Imam Sajjad, why I hear once again horses are approaching our tents. Here Imam Sajjad says they are coming to burn the tents. And one after the other, the tents were torched. And the ladies were moving from one tent to the other tent. And finally, they gathered in the tent of Imam Zainul Abideen. Now here, I would use the help from the narration of Imam Zainul Abideen when he says that, do you want to know what happened in Sham e Gariban? In Sham e Gariban, have you ever seen that a tasbih when it breaks and how the beats of the tes tasbih scatters around? This is how we scattered around when they burned all the tents. The lay women and children came out of the tents in this fashion. In the same fashion, how a tasbih is broken, falls onto the ground and how the beat scatters around. The turn of Imam Zainul Abideen was also burned. Here Zainab asked Imam Zainul Abideen, oh, O oh, Imam, what is the hokum? What is the verdict? Shall we get burnt inside here or shall we leave outside? Because when they're going to go outside, they don't have chador over them. And as it says that Imam Sajjad says, it is wajib to save our life. Go outside. And this is how they went outside, scattered all over the place. And while they were going outside, holy mentions in Maktale Abi Makhnaf that I entered and I saw a little girl who have nice earrings in the in the ears. And he says that I was crying and going to snatch that earrings. The girl asked that, why are you doing this while you are crying? He says that if I don't, if I don't steal this, then somebody else will steal it. And he snatches the earring of Sakina Salam. <laughs> and then as he enters, he looks at a pale and weak, fragile soul on a mat. And this maktal says that I started kicking this young lad who was on the, on, the, on the mat and I snatched the mat underneath that he was lying on. And here it's been mentioned that Zainab picks up Imam Zainul Abideen and comes outside the tent. The tents are burned and the children all are dispersed. And here Zainab says, that I started to look for the children. Mene ek ek bachon ko jama karna shuru kiya. Kyunke sakina nazar aarai nahi aarai thi. Or khas wasiyat thi bhai ki ke sakina ka khayal rakhna. Or jab mene ek ek bachon ko jama karna shuru kiya. Mene kabhi is khayme ke jale wa khayme me jati thi. Baaz bachche to zameen pe behosh ho gaye thay. Or in bachon ko mene 
पलटा के देखने लगती थी इनका पहचानना चाहती थी आखिर ये कौन है आखिर ये जिंदा भी है या मर गए हैं क्योंकि कई बच्चे घोड़ों के तापों के नीचे आकर शहीद हो चुके थे और जब मैं ढूंढते ढूंढते मैदान की तरफ गई मुझे दो नन्हे नन्हे लाशें नजर आए मैं समझी ये बच्चे बेहोश है जब इन बच्चों को मैंने गौर से देखा नजदीक से देखा तो वो थे मेरे ओन और मोहम्मद लेकिन जैनब ने यहां पे गिरिया नहीं किया क्योंकि सकीना की तलाश थी और जब मैं एक शख्स से पूछा कि क्या आपने कोई बच्ची को देखा है तो इस शख्स ने कहा हाँ मैंने देखा था कि एक छोटी बच्ची जो जिसकी दामन में आग लग चुकी थी और मैं चाहता था उसके खरीब जाऊं लेकिन बच्ची कहने लगी खबरदार मेरे खरीब ना हो <laughs> और फिर ये बच्ची इस दलते हुए दामन को लेकर इसे बुझाकर मख्तल की तरफ गई है जैनब मख्तल की तरफ आई है और क्या देखती है कि एक छोटी बच्ची एक ऐसी लाश से लिपटी हुई है जिसका सर नहीं है <laughs> यहाँ पे जैनब ने पूछा सकीना तुम किस तरह से यहाँ आई हो तो सकीना ने कहा मैं बाबा बाबा कह के मख्तल की तरफ दौड़ती हुई चले गई और एक लाश अपना हाथों को बुलंद किया और कहा इलाई या इलाई या सकीना मेरे सकीना मेरे पास आ जाओ और जब मैं इस लाश के पास पहुंची तो वो खुशबू जो मेरे बाबा की थी <laughs> सकीना को जमा किया सकीना को ले गई हजरत जैनब और तमाम बच्चों को जमा किया और फिर उसके बाद शाम गरीबा हुई और यहाँ पे देखा जाता है और रिवायतों में भी कहा गया है कि जो अतराफ के कबीले के लोग थे जब बीबिया ने शाम गरीबा में एक जगह जब जमा हो गई थी कुछ गजा और कुछ पानी कुछ चिराग लेकर इस क्याम की तरफ आ रहे हैं और जब वो खरीब पहुंचे तो कुछ गजा और पानी दिया गया <laughs> जैसा एक पानी थे <laughs> यहां पे ये पानी जैनब को दिया गया जैनब ने कहा मैं पानी नहीं पीऊंगी <laughs> जिस पानी के लिए मेरा भाई अब्बास मारा गया <laughs> मैं ये पानी नहीं पीऊंगी और यहां पे जब इमाम सज्जाद सलाम ये फरमाते हैं कि बीबी पानी पी लो एक दफा कहा दूसरी दफा कहा तीसरी दफा जब बीबी ने पानी नहीं लिया तो फूपी अम्मा से गया फूपी अम्मा जरा आसमान की तरफ मैंने उंगलियों के बीच से जरा देखो <laughs> तो जैनब क्या देखती है कि हुसैन कौसर के पास है बाबा अली है फातिम तो जरा है रसूल खुदा है हसन मुशतबा है सब हुसैन को पानी दे रहे हैं लेकिन हुसैन पानी नहीं पी रहे हैं और कह रहे हैं कि जैनब मेरी प्यासी है सकीना मेरी प्यासी है तो यहाँ पे इमाम जैन उलाबीन इल्तमास और इल्तजा करते हैं जैनब पानी ले लो पानी पी लो बाबा हमारा प्यासा है और फिर यहाँ पे जब जैनब ने खोजा लिया और कहा कि जब पानी दिया जाता है रसम यह है कि छोटों को पानी देना चाहिए जब ये पानी का कोजा लेकर सकीना को दिया और इस रसम को पूरा करने के लिए सकीना ये कोजा लेते दौड़ती हुई चली गई मेरा असगर कहा है <laughs> छोटों को पानी दिया जाता है अला लानतुल्ला अला कौम जालमीन सयालमदीन अजलमिन यन कलेबू मातम हुसैन